Radio Shield K9. Today I'm going to tell you guys why IGP tracking is the bomb. IGP tracking is the most complicated form of K9 tracking to teach because it's so specific and it requires a somewhat unnatural level of micro focus on the track that you don't see in any other style of track. But I know you guys don't really understand what you're looking at, so I'm going to explain to you. Number one, you can see a lot about a dog when you watch him or her track. You can tell a lot about the quality of the dog, the genetic quality of the dog when you watch him or her track. And you can see a lot about the trainer and what the trainer is capable of doing in their tracking when you watch a dog track in the IGP style. The best part about it though is on trial day, you get to go, take all the work that you've done with your dog and compete against other trainers that have done that kind of work as well with their dog. You get to see whose training is best, you get to see whose dog is best. Of course, every dog has his or her day. There's dogs that will have a bad day and dogs that will have a good day. Believe me, I've been there too. So, I am going to give you guys the bare bones. How does it work? What should you be looking for? So, I just need free traffic. This purple marker is going to represent the dog. We've got footsteps. So this is what footsteps look like, roughly, okay? How is the dog pointing? What should the dog be doing? So, this is the start, all right? They're gonna check in with the judge. They're gonna bring their dog up to the first footstep. And then the dog is gonna be given the command to track. The dog needs to start tracking right from here. And the dog needs to stay in these footsteps, okay? And he is being judged by how tightly he holds to the footsteps. But it gets a little more complicated. He can't just be in the footsteps. How deep is his nose? As he's tracking, is it a consistent speed or is he getting faster, slower? Is he rushing? Is he doing like a big snake where he's coming in and out of the footsteps, right? Is he doing one of these? Is he blowing corners and doing big circles? How tight is he adhering to this track? Is his nose in the ground or is his nose elevated? Is his nose in the ground, then elevated, then in the ground? All these things matter. The ideal picture is a dog showing very strong concentration. His nose low, in the track, as deep as possible. Here's the other thing, right? Because in back in the day, people said, okay, I need to make that picture. So what do they do? They put a lot of pressure on the dog. So the dog would track, but he'd track scared, right? You could see, like, he was there, but he's like, oh shit, I better not screw up, because if I screw up, bad things are going to happen. So you could see a very tight body language. The tail was down, sometimes it was even tucked. The ideal picture is a dog that's free and open. Using a lot of pressure and tracking has definitely not disappeared. People still do it, I do it. But you have to be careful with how you do it. You have to make sure you're doing it in a way that's balanced so that your dog doesn't get you disqualified or look miserable on the track. The skill of the dog is important. The body language of the dog is super important. So we wanna see a dog that's deep. We want to see a dog that's detailed, that adheres to this track as much as possible, that doesn't blow corners, and that stays on the track. And then, there's the last thing, there are articles. And that's those red X's that I put now in my very messed up track, okay? So when your dog reaches an article, the dog should indicate on the article without bothering the article. So he's not allowed to dig at it or bump it, or he should indicate on the article. Ideally, he goes into a plot and waits on the article. The article right between his front paws and his body language pointing at the article, but not bothering the article. If he bothers the article, it'll cost you points when you get into the upper levels. So you wanna see a dog that clearly indicates the article. So the articles are very important, but the other thing is how detailed your dog is on the track. You can get all three articles and still get an 80 score if your dog is wandering in and out of the track. So if you're watching a dog track, you want to see the skills of the dog, all right? You want to see a dog that's deep, that's concentrating, but showing a nice open body language. You want to see a dog that's making those corners. You want to see a dog that's indicating on articles. And most importantly, from my perspective, I want to see a dog that indicates when he's off odor. When he reaches a corner, especially if the track player maybe made the corner a little bit uh, with, with wider steps, he's gonna go boom, boom, and he'll check here, but there's no odor here. So what he should do is immediately stop, check to the sides and say, oh, there it is, and then boom, 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 boom. In some competitions, it's dirt. In some competitions, it's like a crappy hay field, like a mixture of mud and dry grass and dirt. Those ones really suck. There are a lot of different factors into what kind of conditions you are gonna deal with on a track, but here's why I love it. Most dogs, if you train them, their natural tracking behavior is a combination of air scenting, where they're lifting their head and taking the air, and 
also you know, tracking for disturbance in the ground. Now, I've heard a lot of police officers say that dogs they get that have been started in this system are some of the best, most detailed trackers they ever have. So I know a lot of people, it's not real, it's not. Well, IGP is not about what's real. It's about pushing the envelope and getting into the most complex form of training. And it's not functional training, it's super complex. And because it's so complex and it's so difficult and every little minutia is judged, it pushes training to the utmost limit. So I really enjoy IGP tracking. The sport is always evolving. It'll tell you a lot about the dog, because especially at the high levels, you know that dog was subjected to pressure. So I hope you guys understand a little bit more about tracking, and you're starting to get a little bit interested in the complexity involved in training the track. Thank you for watching.